Death Metal Review, Aquaman vs. Neymar, February 6, 2019. Whew, now, before we begin, as I stated in my Dark Side vs. Thanos review, from here on out, I am always going to play the actual death battle itself, and we're going to sit down and watch it. So, for those who are pissed off with death battle and have had enough of their shit like I and many others have, you can just come to my review, watch the death battle with me, and then see my review so that way you don't have to give them your viewership. He legit just said fans should watch his stuff so def uh, so they don't just see Death Battle's animation and give them the views. Isn't that like fucking illegal? Isn't that just literally just pirating at that point? Downloading the episode so they could fucking uh, give so you could give the the viewers. Oh, Jesus, it's so it's so hard for me to say because it, it sounds so fucking stupid. <laughs> The animation is fine, although really, I don't think that there's any excuse anymore for Death Battle to keep doing um, 2D sprite death battles anymore because they have the resources and manpower necessary to always do 3D death battles. There's just no reason to do a sprite death battle unless... It's like a specific, special kind of thing. Well, actually, no. Just scratch it. They just need to stop with the 2D sprite death battles. They may have been acceptable back in the day, but now it's just kind of like... Like, when you consider the fact that my show, Blood Royale, I have, like, no team whatsoever. I have maybe a couple of people helping me and only a couple animators. It kind of makes sense that I won't be able to do a lot of 3D death battles. However, they don't have this issue. They can do 3D death battles whenever they want, and really there's no excuse not to. And I think it just needs to stop with the sprite fights. Now sure, they did have some pseudo 3D moments in this fight, but again, just go full 3D. One thing that did kind of bug me was the opening. Why does the fight have to start at a pool? Uh, the fight starts at a pool because they can. It would definitely be in character for at least them didn't be near water. A pool seems like a perfect place to start off. And if you want a, good, a better reason why that's a pool, just it leads at the pool. And, oh, why is Namor there? Either Sue Storm's at the pool, uh... Or, you know, the Avengers are also there, because he is a member of the Avengers, or the X-Men. But let's be honest here, did any of you even know who the fuck Namer was before this death battle? I highly doubt it. But they don't exactly go out of their way to piss off the fanboys like they do when they do Goku vs. Superman or Gar vs. Toph, where they intentionally anger the fans just for views. He says that he betrays to anger the fans, which is a bold claim with no proof. However, one last thing I will say is for the love of God, death battle. Stop with all the ads. Seriously, it's starting to get a little bit annoying with all these advertisements. We get it, death battle. You have sponsors, can you tone down the advertisements? just a little bit I mean you don't have to be advertising whores for the people that are sponsoring you we get it can you tone it down it starts to get annoying also he also adds at the beginning of the episode and at the end of the analysis isn't a loss Dio versus Alucard review animation rewind March 31st 2019 it was a fucking Terrible. Okay, first off, the fight cuts off abruptly. There is no ending. It just stops. He starts off with saying the fight ends abruptly. Let me show you the ending to the fight. Shut up, 
そして時は遠きだ子供とローラーだ The fight does not end abruptly. If you want an abrupt fight, let me show you Spawn vs. Um, Alucard. That is an abrupt fight. Uh, again, he shows the entire fight. No, sorry, he didn't show the fight this time because it would have shown that the fight doesn't just end abruptly unless you would edit it to end abruptly. Number one, he fails to mention Alucard's omnipresence from when he absorbed Schrodinger. He also gives Alucard the uh, omnipresence stuff, which. From what I've heard, Schrodinger's cat is a end of the series thing that shouldn't be used because it's never explained. It's highly, um, it's highly debatable about what it could mean and everything. And that it doesn't make sense for him to have, you know, Schrodinger in him for a fight because it's at the end of the series. You know? Never used it. Powers are never explained. Blah. blah. Absorbed Schrodinger, he got his power, and how Schrodinger works is this. As long as he is aware of his existence, he can be anywhere he wants at any given time. The same holds true for Alucard. As long as he is aware of his existence, he can not only come back, but be wherever the fuck he wants. And with you just claiming stuff about Schrodinger and uh, Schrodinger's cat, doesn't help really. And number two, Alucard doesn't need to kill Dio. All he'll do is just absorb him. Okay, like, has he forgotten that Alucard and Ceres have an ability where if they bite you dr and drink your blood, they can also absorb your soul and steal your powers? Did Animation Rewind just forget about that, or did he just leave that out because he wanted Dio to win for reasons? Uh, AR definitely does mention the blood absorbing as shown right here. When Alucard drinks his target's blood, he gains access to their abilities, memories, physical appearance, and soul. Dio Whenever you kill Alucard, he has an ability to... He has a stock of souls that he has absorbed. And if you kill Alucard, he just throws the next soul in his place. So, seriously, his explanation for why Dio wins and his scale for them was absolute BS. He doesn't even, like, break them down. All he really does is mention a few feats and then show some bars for their stats that don't mean fucking anything because he doesn't actually break them down. And, and I'm gonna stop here right there. A death is a death. The respawning shit's stupid. If I shoot the scout in the head and he dies, the respawning should not matter. He's dead. And... He, he shows the stats of how they're faster, or how Dio is faster, and stronger, and stuff. You just gotta read. Dio has his Heaven Ascension form, and his Over Heaven form. Death Battle Review, Ben 10 vs. Green Lantern, May 32nd, 2019. The fight, for the most part, it's well animated, however, it lacks in creativity. While I love what they did with the animation here, considering the possibilities of what could have been done here, they definitely leave a lot more to be desired. I mean, considering the possibilities here, they could have done so much more, but because they're so used to setting up these Dragon Ball-esque fights, they lose a lot of potential in what can be done with not only Ben 10, considering all the aliens he has at his disposal, and the power that Alien X is capable of, 
And of course, we have Green Lantern, whose power is literally only limited by his imagination. There's definitely so much more that could have been done here, rather than a bunch of punching. And I am going to give credit for the animation, however it also loses points for a lack of creativity and imagination. The the animation leaves out creativity? You seen the animation? And sure, Ben doesn't use all of his aliens, but that'd be stupid because a lot of them would be useless in the fight. As much as I wanted to see Upchuck throw up on hell, that's not gonna happen. The only one that they did miss out on that I would have loved was Wrath, who was planned but was cut. Cause it would have been funny to hear Wrath yell at hell and hell being like, what the fuck? And uh, yeah, I. For the two, I didn't expect any planet destruction or anything like that. A moon at most, really, because those two aren't known for their destructive capabilities. It's out of character for both of them. The fight is fine. It's way better than what Kimi Moore added. Let me show you the famous time, huh? Thanks for the tip with both of them. Time, huh? Thanks for the tip. Yeah, you can kind of hear the difference of how, you know, the music adds. Areas where they fuck up, such as forgetting that the Omnitrix has its own self-defense failsafes. They didn't forget the ultimate defense thing, and it wouldn't help uh, Ben anyways. As shown with the Chrono Sapien Time Bomb, a, a bomb that affected a multiverse of Ben's, the Chrono Sapien Time Bomb destroyed those bends. It wouldn't killing Ben count as removing the watch? And definitely one of them would have had their arm cut, uh, destroyed before their entire body. So, cause they all block with their arms. So it's not too multiversal, like how would definitely be able to get through the uh, ultimate defense of the Omnitrix. A self-defense pulse blast against anyone trying to force it off Ben's wrist. And, and that being, they used non-canon material. Now, I looked into this, and apparently the version of Ben that had the master control is no longer canon. So Ben should not have had the master control, and they should not have given that to him. However, they do bring up a completely made-up fact about the weakness of the Omnitrix, just for the sake of a joke, and I really wish they didn't do that, because you should never make up facts just for the sake of a stupid joke. Death Battle really needs to tone down the jokes a little bit more. Uh... They they use Ben 10 from Ben 10 Omni Ben 10 to Omniverse because the reboot Ben isn't as strong as normal Ben because that that's the non-canon stuff that he's talking about or not the non-standard version because normal Ben in the new series isn't as strong or anything it's a stupid point to do that and the Omni tricks does mess up let me show you a clip from uh, a few times in every Ben 10 series. Someone's got to rescue those people. Rip Jaws to the rescue! Hey, I said Rip Jaws, not accelerate! Stupid watch! Time to accelerate! Oh, Ripjaws! <sighs> or Upchuck. Upchuck is good. And now, Vilgax is going to get a taste of way big! Chromastone? Caesar's call for Chromastone! Humongousaur! If you're gonna give me the wrong guy all the time, why do you even have a dial? I think Jet Ray's faster than anybody. Jet Ray! 
Aw, oh, man. I mean, Wrath! Let me tell you something, Ultimatrix. Wrath is sick of you not working right. It's not even funny anymore. Come on, Omnitrix. Give me Wrath. Give me Wrath. Green Manor? Man, I have got to get a manual for this new thing. Get ready to throw down with Kumongasaur! Let me tell you something, self-proclaimed greatest huntsman in the galaxy. Wrath is not humongousor, but Wrath is gonna make you humongousory. I've got. Kimimar also doesn't like a match where the powers are connection. That is so stupid. Ah, uh, you want to see a you want to see a guy who who does the ice thing but is so weak to ice or weak to fire. Fight some guy who's fire related. That's that, that, that's dumb. While I did leak the actual death battle itself onto my channel like I promised I would in my previous videos, I am a man of my word. So, same powers fights are fine. Uh, connections though, like sword and sword are not good. Those are dog shit connections. Those are connections that are horrible and bad. Because two swords don't make a connection, but two guys who can manipulate the elements of fire is good. And ice, a guy can use his ice, but to eat the fire, fright the fire guy is a dumb matchup. <clears throat> now into Death Battle, Whis vs. Mitsuru review, June, June 13th, 2019. I love how he like, leaked the Death Battle before it came out to YouTube, so you know, his fans don't have to suffer through Death Battle stuff. And, and then he gets Kyber and he's mad because of it, like, you stole their video, man. SMH my head. Which, guess what? Are completely useless against Mitsuru. This is the problem when you have characters that have the same power fighting each other. Once again, Death Battle doesn't learn their lesson. They still do the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again, never learning their lesson at all. Uh, I also love how he says the battle should re uh, delete their own videos and then re-upload them, because that is such a stupid thing to say. Because any time Goku could go to Godzilla and beat him up, and then, oh, but now, now Goku's being Superman, let's delete Goku Superman 1 and 2. It's stupid if you, you know, you see? And if Death Battle really wants to show that they're trying to turn over a new leaf, then it would make sense for them to delete episodes like Yang vs. Tifa and re-upload them with the proper results, or stop having characters fighting each other where it's obvious that one side literally has no chance against the other. So you see the difference. Death Battle, Johnny Cage vs. Captain Falcon Review, June 18th, 2019. Now, he says a good fight for Captain Falcon would be Beautiful Joe, but he doesn't give any explanation for this. And he puts Falcon at, like, Star Moon Buster? I, I don't remember Captain Falcon in the anime being that powerful, buddy. But, unless you're talking about that whole lighting up the solar system thing, which happened once, if it was destruction. Second, just lit it up, but, you know, whatevs. He really doesn't add on to the fight, the music he added on sucked. Same old, same old. In Death Battle Aang vs. Edward review, July 24th, 2019. The music he added, guess what, sucks. And one thing that I hate is that he said, Ah, oh, I'm glad Death Battle didn't use Leg stuff for Legend of from Legend of Korra because that show's bad. Which, show ain't that bad, kids. And I think Legend of Korra should be used for Aang as 
stuff for that is uh, scalable for Aang. Like, you meet the first Avatar. He matters. The stuff that he done, the way he learns, he gives a lot of backstory on how do the Avatar powers work and everything. And how many years of experience Aang has when he's in the Avatar state. Because the Avatar state is the combined knowledge and powers of every Avatar before him. So yeah, disregarding though the uh, Ledger Core stuff for Aang is all awful. And the Cabbage Joke was fine. Here, look at it. Death Battle actually listened and didn't use any bullshit information from Legend of Korra, so... Irritating. You couldn't have just ripped a soundbite from the cartoon itself of him saying, My Cabbages. Even Nostalgia Critic thought to do that. It seems to me that would have been a very easy solution rather than trying to recreate it with your own voice actors because it just wasn't as funny and I felt like that should have been an easy one for you, Death Battle. Ripping the audio off of the show would seem super off in it, in it and, you know, it would be stealing, but you don't know that much about the steal from other creators, do you? Death Battle, Ghost Rider vs. Lobo, review, August 15th, 2019. Uh... The, the little, the little, oh, yes, I'll do this master thing, it was super, super fucking cringe. You saying it? Hello everyone, and welcome back to yet another Death Battle review. And as you can tell, I am quite excited today. Dawn, could you please start the video? Yes, Master, right away. And what really pissed me off about this was how you motherfuckers decided to lowball Ghost Rider by only bringing up his feat of taking down a skyscraper. Are you fucking serious? You are going to lowball the Ghost Rider to make it look like he's not as powerful as he really is because this matchup is an absolute joke power-wise. ...enough to dodge bullets or even outright catch them in his teeth. He's powerful enough to create massive eruptions, blow up mountains, and even tear down a skyscraper. The average skyscraper weighs over 200,000 tons. That's the same weight as 1,100 blue whale. Even a beatdown from World War Hulk just got him even more pissed and extra flamey. Not just that. This was bonded to another host. They even managed to defeat Mephisto in his own realm. For reference, Mephisto once battled Galactus, devourer of worlds. Stars detonated, galaxies trembled, and the entire universe was at risk, simply as a byproduct of their battle. Eat. Even World War Hulk couldn't finish him off. Ever, do you recall how powerful Zarathos was? Zarathos was an equal threat to Mephisto, whose battles tore apart the universe. Plus, and uh, Ghost Rider vs. Lobo is also an easy more vs. DC match to work with. In the week, the he says the weakest Ghost Riders are multiversal, as shown right here. What did people see in this matchup? So. Let's really break this down. We have the Ghost Rider going up against a parody character. Why? What is the point in that? Wouldn't it make more sense for Lobo to fight someone, you know, like him? What is his connection with Ghost Rider outside of the fact, well, they both use motorcycles, they both fight with chains, and they're both bounty hunters. Well, by that same logic, you want to have Boba Fett fight Ghost Rider while you're at it? Or how about Samus Aran fighting Lobo? Oh wait, that would be a stupid idea? Well guess what, this one isn't any better. The weakest incarnations of Ghost Rider are about multiversal level at best. As much as I would love multiversal, um, Lego Ghost Rider, no. Only a few characters in the LEGO Marvel Universe get multiversal through scaling to Kang, which Kang doesn't even get that normally. He gets it through um, uh, his technology, which Captain America fights with a shield. And Dormammu, if you uh, using the lore. 
but still no one normally fights Dormammu, as when you do fight Dormammu in the second Lego game, you just fight a bunch of his minions and stuff. But, but you know, yeah, every version of uh, Ghost Rider is, is multiversal. That's fine, sure. Your stupid little preview on your obnoxious ass podcast. You were so lazy, you didn't even have the animation finished. Why show a preview for something that isn't finished? Why would you not have the sound finished in your fucking preview? It makes no fucking sense. Let's see. He talks about how the fight was done when they showed on the Death Metal cast, which, which is stupid. A, they've done this multiple times, like Roshi versus Jiraiya and all that, where the sound and all that wasn't finished. But y- you know what a demo is, right? What a preview is, right? When you play a demo of a game, it's not the full game. When you want to preview of something, it isn't the full thing. Death Battle has publicly admitted that they don't listen to their fans and they will intentionally create controversy just for the sake of getting more clicks. They have admitted this. They don't give a shit about their fans no matter how much they claim to do. What they do care about is being able to sell shit to you. That's why they're constantly shoving advertisements and their merchandise down your throat. They know- uh, He claims that Death Metal doesn't care about the fans without any proof. And he says a good fight for Ghost Rider is Simon Belmont? Alright, alright. You're picking on Death Battle because the connection between Lobo and Ghost Rider, you say, are, oh, motorcycle bounty hunter with chains. Um. Give me, give me a second. I need to think of the connections between Simon Belmont and Ghost Rider. Oh. Demon versus Demon Hunter? Oh, alright, I'll take that one. And th- they use chains as whips? And that's about it. That, 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 that's it, but okay. Definite re- review. Terminator vs. Robocop. September, tw- September 5th, 2019. This, this fight is in a spike fight. That, that's all. He just adds that it's a spike fight, which it's not. Uh, Cell vs. Miro is a spike fight. Because no character or Cell never h- held the advantage. Robocop vs. Terminator, they each held, like, no one dominated the fight horribly. Death Metal, Sasuke vs. Hiei review, September 27, 2019. Yeah, yeah, nothing. This is when it's getting into just, he says, he says blank in, which he's already said before. Death Metal review, Ganondorf vs. Dracula, October 18th, 2019. His rule of Boomstick being able to only make one pun per episode is stupid. Does he not understand Boomstick is the funny man and the gun smart guy and the gun gun guy? To is this more serious and calculation heavy character. They, they bounce each off bounce off each other very well. And again, connections over fairness. It is so like easy. Cause you're not limiting yourself to some stupid aw. They're not fair. This match then sucks, cause that's stupid. Um, Death Metal Review, uh, Mob vs. Tatsumaki, November 6, 2019. The music he chose was trash. Death Metal, Deadpool vs. The Mask, November 27, 2019. Now I was downloading the file for this video for editing purposes. For some reason, the video file, when I converted it, was literally titled as Buy Death Battle Merchandise instead of Death Battle Deadpool vs. The Mask. I shit you not, I took a screenshot of it to prove I'm not bullshitting you guys. I have the evidence. 
death battle. It looks like they're done trying to hide what they are. They're just being fucking honest at this point. Literally before I even started my review, the first thing they do when I download the file is tell me to buy their fucking merchandise. I don't believe a file name would have been named by Death Battle Merchandise. I, I don't believe you. And if it is for some reason that a YouTube... That a YouTube, um, I... That a YouTube fucking video happened to have been up by Death Battle Merchandise, then that's just more funny than anything. If you don't take anything too serious. You also still don't like joke fights. What the fuck did I tell you, Death Battle? Didn't I fucking tell you if you called the- If you called Big Head the mask, I was gonna fucking lose my shit? I said in your comment section of your dumb premiere shit, If you call Big Head the mask, I'm gonna fucking dock a point on my score just for that alone. And you motherfuckers kept calling him the mask when you know that's not his fucking name. Also, Doom? Definitely fucks up Vader, just saying. And they call the Big Head Killer the mask because that's what he's known as. And I know you later explained that you don't like it because the Big Head Killer is serious and all that, but... In later comics, the Big Head Killer still shows to be wildly and cartoony as the mask is, so... Yeah, uh, argument's invalid. This one, they're not even hiding it. They intentionally put a character in a situation where it was an obvious spite matchup. All just because they don't like Deadpool. And then they pull the whole bullshit of, Oh no, we feel so bad. Have we gone too far? I'm gonna miss Deadpool. It's so fucking cliche. It's such fucking bullshit will work so well is because the writing is balanced between fourth wall breaking humor and serious character development with Wade. Pool versus Pinkie Pie. You just stop in the middle of the fight to do some live action bullshit for no reason. Basically. And jokes should be in a joke fight. The live action had a reason. Here, here's the reason! Oh, wow! You weren't kidding! Ah, oh, beans were in the storyboards! Old chum, I think that zany stunt of yours ran out the budget. Can't make the scene if you don't have the green. Lucky for you, I have an idea! Did you just skip that part? Or did you go through and how, how I watch your videos on two times speed and uh, miss me? But unlike you, I didn't miss anything. Let's see. Hmm. Alright. Beast vs. Goliath. Death Metal Review. December 14th, 2019. <laughs> The Hitler joke? Super funny. Oh, oh, that's a funny old boy. And he mentions non canon stuff without showing any proof about what this non canon stuff would be, so. It's another thing of Kim Moore just not explaining himself. And if that's the case, then a lot of the feats they mentioned in this video are no longer canon. Which, if that is the case, well, that's a big uh-oh for Death Battle. Death Battle Review, Samurai Jack vs. Afro Samurai, December 12th, 2019. He mentions how the fight's fair and all that, and how he likes it, which, yeah, it's a good episode. But no, I'll, without, you know, speed, Jack beats Afro in every stat. Except for speed, where they're roughly around the same, but it's still FTL to relativistic, so... Yeah. Just wanted to mention that. Nightwing vs. Daredevil review, December 21st, 2019. 
<sighs> See, episode Kimimura is praised for being really good. And I like how he starts off with he knows that it's wrong, and he doesn't talk about the episode at all. Kimimura doesn't talk about Death Battle, Nightwing vs. Daredevil, for much. He talks about Nightwing vs. Daredevil itself. Not the same with the Death Battle or anything, except I like li the live action because it reminds me of the Daredevil show, basically. It has been brought to my attention that apparently the results and scaling in this episode were completely fucked. Death Letter Review, Kenshiro vs. Jotaro, December 22nd, 2019. This episode is pointless. It, it's nothing. He points out nothing. And... We're, get, we're, we're getting to the end, don't worry. Death Battle, Top 10 Worst Death Battles, Canon. February 7th, 2020. We're getting near to where we started. Honorable mentions, going quick, are Lucy vs. Carnage. Back to the basics. And he admits Carnage should have won, which a huge turnabout for him. Uh, damn, he he's really has his foot in his mouth this time. So, technically, even though I really don't want to admit this, the Marvel fans are right. Carnage should have won. Rainbow Dash vs. Starscream. He still doesn't get a joke fight. He also doesn't like he members of Lionel for some reason because he made the joke of I, well there are two famous Mattel toys fighting each other. Okay, by that same logic should He-Man and Lionel fight each other? Oh wait, they actually did that. Never mind. But He-Man and Lionel have more connections than Hasbro toys. So, uh yeah. Whis vs. Mitsuru, um, he puts there, he says, uh, this. Their strongest fighters range from, like, building level to maybe town level. It's absolutely pathetic. Your strongest Ruby character is about as powerful as early fucking Naruto characters. And I'm gonna hate to tell him about planet level Ruby. Ooh. Thor vs. Raiden. Uh, his explanation sucks because it's like, oh, see, see power. <laughs> Game guy versus Master Chief. It's a season one fight, so yeah, it wasn't really that good, and I don't see why it should be remade. Because, or no, I don't see why you think it should be remade because Doom Slayer, um, is so much higher than Master Chief is currently. It's ridiculous. So. If you're up with your, uh, need to be fair to be good or else I'm angry, then you probably don't want to see that one. Ryu vs. Scorpion, blah blah blah. He doesn't like the match because it's trendy, even though there's more connections than just Mortal Kombat vs. Street Fighter. These connections being, um, people who have a demon power that they don't like, as Ryu has the raging demon, which he actually got rid of, which then made into his own character, which he now has the uh, power of nothingness just there. Where, uh, Scorpion, he used to be a normal person, who got turned into a demon by Guan Chi. Which is just one of the many connections, um, so yeah. Batman vs. Captain America, uh, he explained it poorly, blah blah blah. Batman vs. Green Lantern, uh, the, he says that they can pause the hell, but he doesn't show any proof of this. I'm going through this quickly because he doesn't add anything. But number 10, Guts vs. Nightmare. He finally goes back on his point of Guts being stronger, so that's why he fights... That's, uh, or Guts, Guts fights people stronger than him all the time. He beats a nightmare. But yeah. And he mentions what uh, about... Man, why do they even use Guts anyways? He... he's... his series isn't finished yet. Which is ridiculous, because if they didn't... Because if they uh, did something, like a fight, with a character that, you know, has an ended series, there wouldn't be a lot of fights, would there? A lot of fights that you mentioned wouldn't have happened, cause, let's see here. Lucy vs. Carnage, Marvel's still going on. Raymond vs. Starscream, I'm pretty sure My Little Pony is still going on in some way, and Transformers definitely is. Whis vs. Mitsuru, Persona's got, still making games, and Whis, Ruby's still going on. 
Thor versus Raiden. Mortal Kombat and Marvel were big still. Uh, Kenshiro versus uh, Jojo or Jotaro. Sure, that one's there. That one's over. Maybe, maybe not for Kenshiro at some point. Batman vs. Captain America. Do I gotta say anything? Rio vs. Scorpion. Not gonna say anything more. Doom Guy vs. Master Chief. Fuck you. Uh, Ace vs. Natsu. Why Guts wins? It's so bad. They say that, well, Guts wins because he fights demons every single day. I'm sorry, Death Battle, that's not actually an argument. You have to actually explain why Guts wins because. Why do you feel the need to do this death battle when the Berserk manga is technically incomplete? You do realize, death battle, that if Guts gets a new weapon or ability or whatever that makes him more powerful than he was with even the Berserker armor, then you do realize they're just going to beg you to do a rematch, right? Speaking about Ace of Sunatsu, he, he explains uh, his old reason was bullshit. Uh, he still has bait and, uh, still has the basis claims, the match being the same power as fire, blah blah blah. Which, he basically just says, same power, bad, mm. Uh, another fight that would never end, Scout vs. Tracer. Um, I, I do enjoy when he, that he just says that he is going off other people's responses to making these. Which is funny, because not a lot of research on his way. Darth Vader vs. Doctor Doom, still not gonna end. Star Wars is still popular. Oh, Vader's dead? Oh, watch him come back, I bet. And there's still things in between, like Vader Immortal, which is canon. Or Marvel, still going on. And the match doesn't suck. <laughs> the Force isn't useless, as precognition is still a powerful thing, even if you're weaker. I showed an Optus Prime versus Gundam. Hmm. Sir, I want to know what the fuck was Death Battle thinking with this matchup? Like, was the thought process was they're very powerful rulers who wield magic and were scarred and wear masks? Is that it? Because if so, that's fucking retarded. Like, it and, and if you want more connections, the connections are dark rulers fighting for a world that they think that they're on the good side for, both using science and magics, both fighting in a major, both fighting with a major army with a dictatorish attitude. Just for, just for a little of them. Gara versus Toph. <sighs> Snore. Boring. That's an edge stuff. Tai versus Agamemnon versus Red and Charizard. The slave thing was a joke. They're taking it too serious. You know, about that whole claim. DB also mentions the, that Grandma has two universe attacking, or at least two plan level. You don't need to expand on the non can No, I'm sorry. You don't expand on the non can stuff. Pokemon rules should also not apply to Digimon, but a Pokemon rules should still apply to Pokemon. And if that's, you know, the case, Agumon would still be able, would be able to hurt Charizard because Dragon's super effective against a Dragon. But yeah. I don't think, you know, Pokemon things should go into, you know, other shows, because that's not how their logic works. As in, Dio isn't weak to holy stuff, because he hasn't been hit with any holy stuff. And any holy stuff that he has been hit with, he doesn't get affected, as he's been in a church before. Also, the, the dark and gruesome way need, uh, didn't need to happen, but it was a fine way for it to go. And, um, if you've seen the video, you know that I'm just skipping over points are because it just doesn't matter. It doesn't give anything new. And, but through the last four, three, two, and one, Yang vs. Tifa, Goku vs. Superman, Deadpool vs. The Mask, Naruto vs. Ichigo, oh, nothing was added of an importance. And, as you see right here in this picture, we're going to get into some of the deeper stuff about Kimi Mark. Like about him revealing one fish mob's fight of Ori two months ago. That is scummy as hell. It, it's a fight that he planned for that you're like, oh, bad connection. Ugh. You're just getting pissy over it and you then reveal it? It's such a horrible thing to do. Such a ass. 
as we see through these comments that I took in a video, he also thinks that just using sprites or just stealing assets, which he does a, he doesn't have a lot of say about stealing assets. Second, the sprites are not stealing assets, really. Um, and yeah. He also says uh, the fight's gonna blow because he read the script. Which, wow, what a dick. And the person who sent this wanted to be anonymous, so I'm not gonna show their name. But they wanted to do a fight of Pepsi Man versus the Noid, which is a g which is a g funny match because soda and soda and pizza have been always connected together, with uh, the Noid being a with a uh, company that owns the Noid being more into Coke than Pepsi. It seems like a fine and funny fight of mascots. But he told the person to quote unquote suck their dick, or no, suck Pepsi Man's dick. Which, okay, fucking weird. But so, a lot of the problems with King Moore comes from he doesn't like same series fights. Or not same series, same powers fights, because same power go is bad, even though I say same power go burr. Um, he's a dick to other versus creators. Especially animation rewind, like, sure, I am making a video about reviewing him, but I'm not gonna be bashing him like, Ugh! Be bad! Which, that isn't it. Um... Jesus, do I have to say anything else? Let's see, uh... He wants every fight to be 3D, which is a ridiculous claim to make, to have every fight 3D. Because there's characters that just don't work in 3D. Bill Cipher! Bill Cipher would never work in 3D. He would look so off. Macho Man vs. Kool-Aid Man, uh, which I know they're doing, I could actually see that in anything. T but Terminator vs. Robocop, it wouldn't look as good if it was 2D. Not every fight has to be 3D, it could be 2D slash pseudo 3D, or pseudo 2.5D, it's fine. But having every fight be 3D, it's limiting yourself, and I don't know if he's realized it yet, but... Making their own assets takes time, takes money. It it takes a lot to do this stuff. And I don't know if he's realized it yet, or if he's going to really realize it when his show actually starts, because where's Broad where's Broad Royal? I don't see it. It's funny that I have something over you. Having a working versus show. That's oh, wonderful. But so overall, Kimi more trash person. Uh but horrible at making claims and just is a avid death battle hater for some reason. Hates sprite fights. Thinks every fight that is unfair is a spite fight. And you just just a dick. Now I'm not gonna get into the depression comments he makes because I am in no way of talking about that. But because I'm not gonna use that against him because that's. Unless I see more uh, more actual proof that he is using that as a defense, I'm not going to say it, put that against him. But Kimimura, if you have actually watched this video and then skipped to the end to hear you know me ripping you a new one, or as you would say, tearing them to shreds. Um, yeah. I hope you guys have a good day. Oh, I know I had so much fun doing this review. Deathless will still be continuing as normal, just getting voice actors and blah 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 blah. Fuck you, see you again.